At this point in our series, we've built an application image for ourselves, and from that we can start and run containers that will run our application. And we've seen how to connect our application container to a MySQL container, making sure that they are connected to a common network so that they can talk to each other over the network. And in this way, we've run an application and let it run migrations and have a database to save to, and we saw how to persist that data using Docker volumes. So we have made an image using a Docker file. We've seen some stuff about Docker volumes, some stuff about Docker network. And one thing you may have noticed or may have thought to yourself is what a pain it is to actually enter in all the long Docker commands all the time to get all this stuff up and running the way we need to. So one solution to that is to use a Docker compose file, which we're going to build starting in this video. And the Docker Compose file is basically a wrapper around the Docker API to allow you to write a configuration file using YAML to control one or more containers and basically control the lifecycle of those containers, creating them, building them, stopping them, making sure networks and volumes are created and all that good stuff. So let's see how to do that. What we're going to do here is actually go to the top level of our application here and we're going to make a new file. That new file is going to be called docker-compose.yml because it'll be a YAML file. And in this file, we're going to use docker-compose stuff. And in this file, we're going to define what containers we want to run and communicate with each other for our application here. So we're basically building a small infrastructure, a development environment here for our application, the Laravel application that we were hacking on in the last few videos. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is actually just say the version, and it's going to be version 3, which is the latest version of Docker Compose. I don't believe in this video series we're going to be using anything specific to Docker Compose version 2 or 3, but I like to put the latest here just so we are explicit about it. Now, there are a few things we are going to define, and these are the things that we want Docker Compose to control. So the first thing is services, which is where we are going to define the containers to run. So a container, an image, whatever you want to call it, is going to be called a service within Docker Compose. So we'll have a MySQL service, a container running MySQL, a Redis service we'll add, and then of course our application container, we'll use that to run our application service. We're going to tell Docker Compose what networks to create for our application for the containers to connect to. And we're going to define a volume, one or more volumes. And in our case, it'll be one for Redis and one for MySQL. So I'm not going to do the services yet in this video. Let's just do networks and volumes to keep this simple. So for networks, I'm just going to define one network. You can define multiple, but we're going to do AppNet. And you don't actually need to define anything else other than that, right? You can, I could say create one named AppNet, create one named Foo, create one named Bar. But I like to be generally explicit with the uh, options that you can set for them. So I'm going to name one AppNet, and AppNet is going to use the driver bridge, which is the default driver, but I'm just going to be explicit about defining that here with this network. And that's the only network we need here. We're just going to use that one network for our containers to use to communicate with. And then volumes. We're going to create two. One I'm going to call DB data. And that's going to be a driver of local, which again is the default driver. So I don't need to define it, but I like to be explicit about it. And I'm going to call this one cache data. Again, driver local. So I'm creating two because I know ahead of time my MySQL container is going to have one. And my Redis container is also going to have one. Very much like MySQL the Docker file to build Redis defines a volume to create. So you're going to end up with a volume anyway. So you might as well use a named volume so that you can control the life cycle of that a little more. This way, Docker Compose will keep reusing the same volume. So you keep some data persisted, even if you destroy all your containers within this environment and then recreate them. OK, so we've defined two volumes. We've defined the network. We haven't defined any services yet. So in the next video, I just want to go ahead and do that, because that'll be the meat and potatoes, really, of the Docker file.